So this lesson we're talking about canonic attacks. A canonic attack is an attack that goes again into the hat section of a site or it can be applied using server headers as well. The concept behind this directive is that if there is similar or completely identical content on two URLs, you can help tell Google which is the one that you want to show up in their search results. The tag was introduced really some time ago when tracking parameters were still a very big thing. So essentially what happened was that various URLs would have had an insane amount of tracking parameters applied to them, even though kind of their content didn't really change or didn't change at all. But for Google, these were all very different URLs. So of course, they at some point would just start crawling all of them, which would lead to massive amounts of duplicate content. So the major difference between a canonic attack and say, for example, a redirect is that the canonic attack is just a hint, but it's not really a directive which Google actually has to follow. In regards to the canonic attack, Google says, it is a hint we honor strongly we will take your preference into account in conjunction with other signals when calculating you know, your most relevant page. So other signals could be, for example, that the same URL is also part of your XML sitemap or that it has significant more inbound links pointing towards it. Google would then combine those signals and honor your canonical directive, but you know, maybe they don't. So the problem is, that it remains kind of unclear which signals most impact Google's decision making. If you want to clarify whether Google is taking into consideration um, the canonical URL that you have specified, you can go to Google um, to the search results and use the info query and combine it with the URL on which the canonical tag is being implemented on. As a result, you should see another URL which the canonical tag points to. So if this is the case, then Google actually is taking your advice into consideration. If not, it means that Google is ignoring your canonical tag altogether. So make sure there is only one rel canonical directive per URL. Also, you use absolute URLs with the protocol and the subdomain to it. You maintain consistency, so only the protocol, so that's either HTTP or HTTPS. It's either dub 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 or non dub dub dub. And also don't forget the consistent use of trailing slashes. So it's either without a slash or with a slash, but do not mix it. Then rel canonical tags actually need to work. So do not canonicalize to URLs that actually point to 400s. You do not create a canonical tag chaining. Google will ignore this. A canonical URL pointing to another URL with a canonical tag on it is really a bad idea. You only implement canonicals that point to URLs that serve HTTP 200 status codes that are indexable. So, you know, without robots text or the robots meta tag to actually block them and that they are actually URLs that you really want to rank for. From a content perspective, it's also important that if you canonicalize, make sure that those pages are actually very, very similar to one and each other. If they are serving different content, Google will probably just ignore the tag altogether again. So the site audit tool um, can be helpful in avoiding those problems. So for instance, it lets you know about pages with broken canonical links or you know, multiple canonical URLs. And it also reports about accelerated mobile pages with no canonical tags on them.